Hey folks, Mr. Justin here with Secret Weapon Miniatures and another Workbench Wednesday. First, let me thank you for tuning in. I really appreciate uh, your time joining Workbench Wednesday and seeing what's going on here at the desk today. Uh, of course, if this is your first time tuning in, please remember to like and subscribe and bells and whistles and all the things you need to click on and all the things you need to do in order to keep up with what's going on here at Secret Weapon and, uh, well, what's going on here at the Workbench today. Uh, there might be minor interruptions as I'm going today, as we are joined in the studio uh, by my informal assistant, uh, Ophia the Pooch, <laughs> uh, who has decided that my son, who is very loudly playing Fortnite in the other room, um, is a little too much right now. So she is hiding in here with me. All right, so I am back to the oh, very messy desk. Uh, a lot going on today so prep work is not what I would like um, coming into this but that's all right oh I should get to the multi-stream chat so I can make sure that I'm catching up with people who are joining and what's going on howdy folks all right so I am back with the Thunderbolt and I have some light on it let me get my old man eyes in here um, because it also gives me another good lamp Oops. hold it there we go. Nice ring light. All right, cool. So now I've got all the light. Most of it's in the way. There we go. I can do this. Um, and let me go ahead and... Hey, Jess Rich is like to the stream. Hello, Jess. Thank you for tuning in again today. Always a pleasure to have your company. Still trying to figure out group streaming at some point so we can get you in here for another show together. Those were always fun. All right, so let's see about filling with the zoomies. And hello, hello. Focus. Ooh, ooh, look at that. All right, so now we can see the cockpit. And what I've done uh, over the last couple of weeks is not a lot. Um, like I said, things have just been crazy. And uh, I've had a lot going on. Um, so, um, I added some color to the seat. Um, I asked my kid uh, what colors he would recommend. And of course, he said blue and green. So, I'm going to change this bar so it's not red. I find it a little too, uh, a little too jarring at this point. And hello to YouTube. Great to have a viewer from the tubes. All right. So, I need to add some uh, additional detail in here. I'm going to um, put some stripes on the uh, bar here on this um, I don't know what I'm going to do to that. If anything, I might not do anything. And I'm going to add some additional white uh, little dots and lines and whatnot around some of these. Um, I did here on the uh, bar here, you can see I've got the tickety lines. There we go. And I did here, but I'm not sure I'll be able to get the camera to catch these. There you go. Yeah, you can see them. The line of Tiny white stripes that runs down there. Hey, Greg Zinega, hello, hello. And you're our YouTube viewer today. Hey, well, fantastic. From a rainy New Jersey. It's great to have you again. It's always uh, wonderful to have you, and I appreciate familiar faces, of course. So, hello, hello. Thank you for tuning in. Really struggled to get to the desk today. There's so much going on that uh, the idea of doing something creative uh, just didn't appeal. Um, I know that uh, you know people say you know you're having a tough time. Well, go do what you love. Do some creating, and uh, it is good advice. Um, except that when you're struggling, it's hard to get around to it because uh, nothing, uh, nothing sounds good at all. Um, now, one of the things that I noticed as I was working is that I made this bar super lopsided, and um, it also sticks out past this, which is um, suboptimal and I don't like it and hey Chris Jones hello Chris thank you for tuning in great to have your company appreciate your uh, tuning in today and from YouTube yay more excitement from the two all right I need some clippers and of course uh, all of my good clippers are in the other room <laughs> um, Monica and Seamus ran off with the good clippers uh, so we've been working on Gunpla all right, let me uh, take these crappy clippers, and this will be fine. Let me get 
is another nine. In fact, I'm just going to take them both right down to the stub here. There we go. I like that. Oh, yeah, I prefer that. But it's definitely not going to be red. I hate the red. I hate it. I hate it. I'm also going to do some a little bit more work on the seat and the straps. Um, well, a lot more work. Uh, I just wanted to throw down color to see how I felt about it. So I did some really rough um, texturing to it. But I'm going to come in and make sure that they're properly highlighted and shaded. And all of that. Uh, but now we have our... Um, oh, I forget what it's called. The... Uh, thing you turn to lock your canopy um, we've got one march slider two march sliders uh, I added the uh, actual control stick um, all of the gauges and all of this are new including everything across the original cockpit this is the only part that is included in the original cockpit and in this case I just drilled out what they gave me here but I added these um, I'm gonna paint this like a screen um, added that added the um, rise and the strip bar here um, all of this the panels here uh, this panel on top is all new Whew. Uh, obviously the seat belts are new these are new these tubes here on the side are new this is new these canisters here are new oh my god there was so much I really wanted to add some detail to this and I really think it helps make this pop but right now um, what I want to do is get back to my aeroplane and uh, do a bit more weathering, maybe some shading. Yeah, I'm going to do some shading. I'm on airbrush. I like airbrushing. So I'm going to airbrush because I like it. <laughs> if you're struggling and you get yourself to the point you can actually get to your creative place and you're going to do something, give yourself permission to do the part you enjoy most. Give yourself permission to get in there and say, well, Airbrushing might not be the thing that I need to do right now, or even the best choice, but you know what? That's the thing I'm doing. All right. So let's see. While I'm thinking about airbrushing, I'm also going to think about how I'm going to chip the wings. Um, and I had I actually saved it to my phone. Well, that's good. I just got an email letting me know that I am live on my channel, which, you know, thanks. It's nice now. Oh, no. <laughs> you should be working, and instead you're watching this. Well, thank you, Chris. I'm glad you're willing to uh, be trouble with us here. <laughs> All right, download. Where's that airplane cockpit wing thing I downloaded the other day? That's not it. That's the one for the thing. Oh, my phone. You don't always put things in the place that I think you're going to put them. And then I'm like, where's the thing? And I don't know, Justin. You're the one that shaved it. You should know. Justin Crawford is like the stream. Thank you, Justin. Welcome to the Justin searches through his phone for the thing he just downloaded show. This is the trick with reference, uh, reference photos when I put them on my phone now is uh, I used to always keep a good organized folder on my computer for all of this and now now I don't do that oh, that's the cockpit I saved as inspirational I still like that cockpit where are the other things go Instagram no those are things apparently I posted Instagram messenger no Facebook no pictures oh my gosh I don't get to find it it's gone forever. No wing reference for me. Oh, no, there's my wing reference. Yes! All right, so here, I can share my wing reference. And chances are good this is from Spencer Pollard, but I can't be sure. I did not save the name, I'm afraid. And this is the reference I'm going for. Particularly the wear um, that you see here, uh, where it joins the fuselage and the... Um, wing um, because pilots are walking along here to get in um, well in this case along here um, I'm gonna make sure there's a big no step sticker right here uh, even if I have to do um, 
dry transfers to do that. I'm going to say no step on both of these because this is where the uh, flaps are. These are flaps. So we want to make sure that don't walk here. So I'm even going to make sure that I, I avoid um, heavy weathering of any sort here. And to help me do that, I would put tape. But we took the tape out of here because we are actually using the painter's tape for um, house painting. And I know that's crazy. And people are like, what? But that's its intended purpose. So I'm just going to do this to remind myself. Like, don't do that. Of course, I'm also going to shade that. So this is counterintuitive. So I should turn off the airbrush, even though I just gave myself permission to airbrush. I also give myself permission to change my mind. Like I said, it's been that kind of day and been that kind of week. And, and Justin, yeah, man, I'm glad that you can come and catch a few minutes. Always appreciate it. It's great to have company. Now, let's see. I have my little paint pot here. Ooh, this needs to be cleaned, but it'll do for now. There aren't a lot of gimmicks um, that I endorse for painting, but having a multi-chamber uh, paint pot is definitely one of them. Uh, I'm going to need water for that. It's my airbrush water. And the reason I like this is uh, having worked uh, behind a bar before, uh, when you're doing glasses, when you're, when you're rinsing glasses, when you're doing dishes, um, you've got your soapy sink, you've got your rinsy sink, and you've got your clean water. And that's how I treat my brushes. So... Yucky, yucky clean. I've got a sock. I've got a reference photo. And this time I'm not doing um, a subtractive technique uh, like salt or hairspray like I normally would. Um, I am actually doing this uh, additive. I'm going to place the chips uh, one at a time. And I'm coming in first with a bright color. I will change that later, but I'm coming in right now with my engine metal. And that's secret weapon engine metal. And that's that, you know, bolt gun color. I mean, um, 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 nut and bolt color. All right, it's my bright silver. It's luscious, it's wonderful. Saturated on my brush. All right, reference photo. What do you say? What do you say? You say, uh, all right, come in where they're climbing on. And in this case, it comes, the flap comes all the way over. Uh, so I'm not having him any here. So I'm going to do that on this end. So I can think about that as the front. And what have we got? What have we got? Travis is like the stream. And hello, Travis. Another familiar face. Great to have you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in. All right, let's see here. All right, so I am treating this uh, like the area where the uh, pilot comes to the cockpit. So, woo! I'm gonna go a little Blair Witch on you. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna mind you move things around so that I can get in here comfortably. Where am I going to be comfortable working? I'm going to be comfortable working like this. And you can see that. So I'm going to get a little forward. Uh, that's good for, looks like all of us. Cool. All right, so my brush has been out long enough that I am actually going to clean it off and start over uh, because I want to make sure that the paint is nice and fluid. Check that. One of the things I like about using plastic um, for a palette is uh, when I'm checking my consistency, I can check it against this. When I'm using a wet palette because I need to keep um, custom colors and things like that um, wet for an extended period of time, uh, then what I'll do is usually have one of my uh, airbrush cups handy. And then I can just check you know, on the side of that. How are we doing even without primer? Like, are you okay? Yeah, okay. That's that's sticking, so therefore it's not too thin. And I am going to come in here. And I'm going to look at my reference photo again, because I like reference photos. And, ooh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm, yeah. 
Yeah, chippy. Mm, yeah, super chippy. All right. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to do a uh, point on that. Come in and use my giant eye to help. Maybe you need to be mounted further back. Things I'm learning about my tools today. All right. This is a new tool, so I'm still learning things about it. I'm not going to be able to do that without getting it closer, and I can't get it closer without moving it that way. So, one second, folks. Hey, hey, now I like it. Oh, good, it's going to block your view. That makes it perfect. <laughs> now you can't tell when I mess up. All right, let's get some paint on here again. Third try is a charm. Maybe after uh, Secret Weapon's all shut down, I'll... Well, not shut down, right? I should say after Secret Women is sold, I'll have time to get this all dialed in and spend a lot more time doing videos with you. I don't know what the future holds yet. I like these little worn spots here, so I'm going to hit them. Just little baby dots. Here and there, I'll throw in a little line. Just taking my time. So this is an additive technique. Again, we're adding layers. Instead of a subtractive technique like hairspray or salt, where I would be taking away a layer with some water or brush or whatever I was using to get rid of things. I might even come in with a sponge and use that technique. Just stipple it on with a sponge and I get little baby dots. Let me check out my reference photo again, though. I mean, we get some spots that are heavy, but for right now, I'm going to focus on the little chips. Actually, that's not true. Let me start thinking about how a pilot would actually enter here. So if we've got a, a ladder that's not going to be right up against this, so let's say the ladder is right up against here, they're going to come on this way. And I have it on good authority that it's going to be on skids, not wheels. So this guy's coming up here, climbing the ladder, walking this way. So... I'm going to say that simply out of habit, most pilots are going to avoid the yellow uh, just because when we're walking in crowded spaces or things like that, you see the yellow lines, you're generally uh, avoiding them. And hey, Dave, thank you very much for liking the stream. Appreciate it. Um, all right, so working on the Thunderbolt, figuring out how to weather this. Oh, and it looks like, oh man, I wish somebody had said something. Oh, I can get better focus for you. See if maybe a combination of zoom and focus helps. Now I'll zoom out a bit and focus on focus. <laughs> so you can see the overall effect. All right. 
Sure, everyone can hear my kid in the background uh, playing Fortnite at this point. <laughs> All right. So the pilot I'm going to say is climbing onto the wing uh, at this point. And oh, we've got a miniature mayhem here too. Sorry to miss you. Hello, hello, and welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And tuning in from YouTube, appreciate that. All right. So I have decided the pilot's climbing on from a ladder here. Um, I'll put weathering on both sides, uh, but mostly this side. And they're going to come this way, and I'm going to say that they avoid the yellow just out of, you know, societal habit of you can see the yellow lines on the ground and you avoid them. Um, what's fun is even in the lamp here where I've put the silver already, the engine metal, um, it has the illusion of depth. It's great. All right. So it's going to be heavy through here. And I'm actually going to do that with the sponges. I'm going to throw that with the sponge. So let's do some sponge. Chipping. What have I got for sponges? Where's my sponges? All right. I have sponge. I have sponge. I have sponge. Eventually, I'm going to have to start asking people to collect their pluck foam for me again. And Tiffany Rogers, hello, hello. It's great to have your company today. Thank you for tuning in. Working on the Thunderbolt here from Forge World. And I am about to add some heavy chipping with engine metal here. Uh, where I think the pilot would be walking around to get on the plane here. So I'm going to turn this a bit. I still want to make sure it's on camera for you here. And uh, in my old man lens here. All right, there we go. Oh, look at that. I did it on accident, and it's already good. I like it. So I am just stippling on, and you can start to see the little baby chips. Did the sound go away? Well, it, it, the microphone says it's working for me. Is there anybody out there? We'll keep trying. I'm going to just stipple on some more chips. But I'm going to make it heavier going this way. Because I'm going to say they walk towards the fuselage here. It's looking a little sponged over there, so I'm going to go put my sponge a bit and try to fix that. A little more paint. Ah, JD, awesome. Yeah, this stuff is, uh, it's funny, it's, it's ubiquitous until you're at a show and you suddenly don't have it. I remember there was a um, an Adepticon. Now we went around to the uh, vendors there that were selling uh, bags to say, I mean, have you got, have you got plucks, have you got anything? Because Aaron Lovejoy and I were both teaching weathering, and we had between us, I kid you not, um, I think we were each doing like four weathering classes, and we had between us one piece of pluck foam that was smaller than this. <laughs> and we kept exchanging it between classes, and it was all demo. We didn't have to give the students any, thank goodness, because otherwise we were both sitting there and we were like, all right, in class, and you're like, all right, all right, so we do sponge shipping, and uh, all right, all right. Here we go. I'm gonna show you how to do sponge chipping. Chippy, 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 chippy. It was fantastic. One of the many fun bonding weekends with Aaron Lovejoy. I miss him very much. He's a fun character. We've shared a room a few times at uh, Reaper events and gotten up to no good. And I kid on the no good part. <laughs> a very tame roommate. I like having Aaron as a roommate. You do a lot worse at a show. All right. I am going to add some more specific chips where I want them. Add a couple of lines over here.
See, I have an interesting time today thinking about what to do after the sale of Secret Weapon. Lots of interest, nothing concrete yet, but what we got? And William has liked the stream. Welcome, William, William, William. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Howdy. You gotta try that hard to get paint off your brush. It's time to start over. Get some water in there. Thin it. There we go. Looks good. Has a point. of spots where we have little baby dots from the sponge a little heavier because again I've got a pilot walking through here so I'm gonna make some of these nice and large And Jay has liked the stream. Hello, Jay. Welcome. Thank you. Nice to have more company today. Always appreciate it. All right, I'm making it nice and heavy through this area here because, again, this is pilot footstep area. I want that path. I'm picturing our little 28 millimeter feet. Let's find some 28 millimeter feet here. Come here, feetsies. I need the feetsies. I know I have a feetsies. Clean my brush. One chamber, two chamber, three. Get this back on screen so you can see the awesomeness. Woot, woot, woot. Hey, I'm a specimen. I don't fly this, but I climb up here. Oh, look, there's my feet. Oh, that's, that's my feet apart. Okay, I got my feet. All right, so. Walking along like that. Needs to be a little heavier here. A little heavier there. That's what I say. Thank you, Space Marine. You're welcome. It was a pleasure to help. Camera. I love your big terrain sections. I got a set of them last year. Jay, thank you very much. Yeah, those big, uh, the big walls I take it you're talking about, the gigantic resin walls. That one does have Terminator on her. It's not one of my uh, Rogue Trader ones, though. I do actually have some of the old uh, RT plastics. I painted them up a couple of years back. Uh, got them all off sprue. Made a bunch of people sit. They're like, oh, you should have to draw on frame. And I'm like, yeah, sorry. I paint my dollies. Um, but uh, I painted up those early beakies um, as Dark Angels. That's what I played at the time. But it was also fun because I put the new uh, Cypher? Oh, man, I can't remember his name. I'm going to mess up 40k lore, and then all I'm going to get is comments about people like, oh, you didn't even know what you talked about. Um, anyway, the, the Dark Angels, the, the falling guy. So I had him with them. Um, so I was like, oh, look, these are actual ancient Dark Angels, and they're painted black, and that's perfect. So there we go. We've got our big sections. We've got 
the baby dots. Got some scratches. Yeah, that's true. There is definitely some flexibility in the 40k lore, uh, Jay. And yeah, thank you, Jess. I think it's Cypher 2. Oh, huge square pieces. Yeah, the tables. The uh, Tablescapes tiles. Yeah, I've, uh, uh, we're still hoping to see the return of those. Um, well, at this point, uh, I don't know. All of that is uh, going to wind up out of my hands. Um, with Secret Weapon changing hands uh, at some point, uh, hopefully in the very near future, um, that will be up to the new owners. Uh, there's a fair chance that uh, after the sale of Secret Weapon, um, I won't even work here. <laughs> so, um, I don't know. I will certainly uh, do everything I can to uh, remain involved in those projects and provide support to the new owners going forward um, so that we can bring these awesome products back to the community. Because I agree, the Tablescapes tiles were uh, fantastic. Um, and I miss them very much, and I'd like to see them brought back. Mm. All right. And Jay, yes, I have been playing um, long enough to remember uh, those Dark Angels as well as uh, the first uh, plastic uh, battle wagon um, where you had to glue on the individual uh, rectangles that for the wheels and a little mast. And I think the rule at the time was uh, you, it could carry as many orcs as you wanted to put on it um, but when you moved it, anybody who fell off was just dead, just removed from combat. So, yeah. And yeah, I remember the Ultramarine Space Fleet, and oh man. Yeah, I hope that the Tablescape tiles come back. That'd be one of the products that I would certainly love to see going. And Eric has liked the stream. Hello, Eric. Thank you very much. And yeah, spiky wheels, those spikes and the spiky wheels, they were great. All right, so. Let me zoom out here. There we go. Which, of course, means changing the focus. There we go. So you can see now, you know, it starts to give you that impression where a pilot is walking across here to get to the cockpit. And I'll add a bit of weathering to some panel lines here. Uh, what I saw from my excellent reference photo um, on these old World War II planes. And again, this is inspired by, let's get the ring light out of here, um, Tuskegee Airmen. So I'm looking at a P-10 here. P-10, P-40. I'm going to get that wrong too. Um, there were different ones, and I forget which one of them it is that this guy with the stripes was specifically. So I've had a day. <laughs> Be kind in the comments, folks. Uh, it's been a it's been a rough couple of weeks. I'll tell you what. All right, so uh, yeah, I've got the heaviness here where they'd be uh, um, walking to get to the cockpit. But I'm going to get some screechy scratchies on some panel lines here as well, uh, and I'll do it on the other side. But it's not going to be uh, nearly as heavy. It's not going to be nearly as heavy. It doesn't need to be. All right, so let's get my wing light back. Yeah, one of the things I remember doing back in those Rogue Trader days was uh, equipping grots with, I think it was plasma grenades, and pretty much just blowing them up. Um, but then you had Gwar singing Squat Launch in, and... Uh, one of the things, I know that when uh, Age of Sigmar um, was new, and a lot of people were... Uh, there were complaints about missing the game you were familiar with and wanting to be able to play a new edition of that game. And cool, I get that complaint. Totally do. But there were people looking at the rules for Age of Sigmar and complaining about the goofy rules. Um, oh god, rad, rad grenades. I forgot about rad grenades in the Rogue Trader days. Um, but there were people complaining about the goofy rules. Like, you know, uh, well, for dwarves, the player with the biggest beard got a bonus or something. Um, I don't remember the specifics anymore. I hope somebody out there does. Uh, but I thought these rules, of course, were fantastic. It was nice to have something goofy back. And they're like, oh, you know, Warhammer has never been like this. And I'm like, stop right there. I'm like, you guys all missed the Rogue Trader days and the first edition days. 
and all of the goofy stuff that happened. You guys missed the face-eating squigs and the hair squigs. You missed all of the awesomeness that was squigs. Like, cool, we have these giant marching squigs now. Uh-huh, bring back the hair squigs so that I have an excuse to have my orc out there with all the ponytails all over him in different colors. Because that was my knob, my big boss, man. He was just covered in hair squigs. <laughs> it was great. Ah, uh, well. Oh, Thomas asked about armies having uh, resistance to magic based on the color they were painted. Man, Warhammer Fantasy Battle. See, I have to admit to being guilty to never getting around to Warhammer Fantasy Battle. Um, not for lack of interest on my part. There just wasn't anybody out here playing it. Uh, by the time my um, brother uh, was playing it, uh, he'd moved to another state. So, um, And he was working for Games Workshop. <laughs> Uh, which is funny because, you know, when, when we were living together, um, I'd play 40K with friends um, and D&D &D and stuff. And they, they were never into it, my little brothers. Um, and then uh, I went to visit them years later. And not only had both of my brothers gotten into D&D &D and uh, Warhammer, um, like I said, uh, one was working for Games Workshop at the time. And their roommate was one of the guys that I used to game with. And I was like, wait, my blown. Uh, but I'd taken at that point like a 10 year or so break um, from the hobby altogether. And I saw my brother set up in the garage and I was like, you know what? I have some old Warhammer stuff at home. I'm going to go home. I'm going to find some Terminators. He needs a squad of Terminators. So I'll paint him up for him. And I dug out my old Ralph Parth of Paints and my old miniatures and the rest is history. <laughs> I was suddenly back into it going, oh yeah. I quit doing this, and I should not have done that. So I do hope that whatever happens next after Secret Weapon, for me, um, assuming I do uh, move on and then I don't stay, um, that I hope it's in the industry, because doing models and miniatures is what I've wanted to do since I was six years old. <clears throat> and I took a big, long break on that to do uh, plenty of other things, so many other things. Um, but predominantly, uh, predominantly advertising and business development, um, brand management, all those related little facets. And uh, yeah, I could do that again, but I'd rather do it in this industry. Hopefully, I get to do the creative side. I have some flexibility, so I'm sure I'll find something good. More importantly, I founded Secret Weapons so that I could be home with my kid instead of always at work like I used to be. Now it turns out my son has some special education needs. Being home with him is even more important than ever. So that will be my focus. Particularly until we can get him back into a classroom safely. All right, let me see here. Am I on camera? I am on camera. There we go. I am going to use a card to protect some edges here so that they are distinct. I will remember not to weather too heavily these bits back here by just, there we go, there we go. <laughs> That'll remind me, it's close enough. Oh, Thomas, thank you very much. Uh, uh, sorry you're bummed about Secret Weapon 2. Yeah, it's definitely a, a challenge on this end. Um, I'm glad that uh, it's brought some joy to building your army. And the, the goal at this point is for that to carry on. Um, there are a lot of offers uh, that we're reviewing right now for partnerships um, or acquisition. 
Um, and there's one in particular that I'm currently excited about, um, but I don't have an offer yet, just interest. Uh, oh man, I'm looking at this, and those look like wiggly stripes instead of dots, so I'm gonna clean that up. But, uh, and hey, Michael, thank you for liking the stream. Um, whichever way it plays out, um, and the one that I'm most interested in, the one that I think that would do best for um, the product line in the community, frankly, um, and especially for uh, Lindsay in the warehouse, um, whose job I really want to keep um, very much. Um, uh, that deal would carry on the product line. All of them would. Um, it's just a question of what that looks like. Um, in some of them, uh, I carry on with the company, and in some of them, I don't. Um, the one that I'm uh, currently excited about, the one that we're, um, uh, well, well, we're talking to everybody, but the one that I'm currently excited about, uh, would not have a place for me um, after the transition, uh, at least not in the foreseeable future. Uh, all of the things that I can do for the company, they have covered in other places. So uh, that does open up, you know, possibility for me to do whatever I want. <laughs> um, there is some temptation, too, to go back to the old, uh, you know, uh, corner office jobs. Um, But, uh, you know, there's something to be said, uh, you know, in this industry, uh, you don't get into it to uh, make money. And I took a very substantial cut in pay to do this uh, for the last 12 years. So there's also a temptation to just uh, go make money again for a while. <laughs> uh, the work I've done here has certainly not uh, had a negative impact on my business development career um, in any way, uh, in any of the industries that I would apply it to, whether it's the marketing side, brand development, um, any of that. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd really like to uh, land somewhere still in the hobby. Um, this is a passion I've had since I was six. People would ask me when I was a kid, uh, you know, hey, uh, you know, what do you want to do when you grow up? Um, and at the time, I'd tell me, you know, I want to build models. And I'd get the pat on the back and, you know, what else do you want to do? <laughs> um, you know, but that was the, you know, 70s and 80s. Um, I'm sure a lot of kids at the time, so they wanted to build models. You know, Star Wars uh, was a thing. Um, and I certainly did as a hobby uh, through all of that. Um, and things would be different now with the internet and all of that, uh, you know, for a lot of kids' passions. Um, but yeah, I wound up uh, originally pursuing um, uh, a degree in anthropology uh, because I wanted to teach uh, at the junior college level. Um, from there, that turned into a career in business development um, that landed me for a time um, at companies, uh, startup companies with Finus Connor, the founder of Seagate Technologies, and. Connor Technologies, the make of the tiny little hard drives that you know let us create the iPhone, um, was there for a lot of that. Um, worked for companies like CBS Health Watch um, as an executive producer there. Um, I've been a brand manager, um, and I've worked with companies like Foster Farms, Essential Elements. Um, I've designed trade show booths and retail experiences, um, including one for the Guggenheim. Um, yeah, my career was uh, storied and varied. Um, and ended in a corner office uh, with a good salary, but uh, my doctor told me at the time that I was going to make a lot of money for a very short period of time and stop suddenly, <laughs> sometime soon. Um, led to acute hypertension, uh, stress-induced bleeding ulcer. Um, my wife and I were talking about having a kid, and she loves her job, so it was time for me to quit, and uh, we wanted somebody home for the first five years. And, uh, Monica was like, not it! <laughs> so I said, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll quit. Um, and I developed the business plan and marketing plan for Secret Weapon uh, while I was at my other job uh, just to keep that skill fresh. Um, so when I quit, uh, my wife pointed out, she's like, well, hey, you have this business plan. I was like, yeah, but I don't know anything about running a company in that industry. She says, yeah, you haven't known anything about running companies and in industries before that you've helped write business plans for. That's what you do for a living. And if those plans work, then this one would work. Um, so she talked me out of taking a job um, with a local uh, news publication um, that wanted me to uh, totally change their newsroom um, and turn it into something different than what it is now. Uh, that's all I'll say about that. And uh, I was excited for the job, and my wife convinced me not to take it. And uh, the next month, sales for Secret Weapon increased by more than 400%. Um, I had to hire my first part-time employee, and uh, 
it's been 12 years. Um, as of uh, October 14th of this year, it'll be 12 years. So, yeah, um, it's been a crazy ride. Obviously, the, the plan worked <laughs> with your help in the community, of course. Um, so, yeah, hopefully uh, I get to avoid the administrative next time, uh, whatever I do in the industry next, and to focus on the creative. It's still where my passion lies, and I'd love to bring new product ideas to market um, for someone. Uh, you know, I've got a good track record of doing it, so hopefully I'll be able to keep doing that. And we'll be able to have fun new toys to play with together. But in the meantime, I'm still focused on Secret Weapon and going forward, making sure that the lights stay on um, until the transition takes place, that Lindsay gets to keep her job. Um, and you guys have her support for these products going forward because Lindsay is the one who has made this company work in the warehouse, uh, hands down, bar none, um, the past many years. Um, everything coming out of there, everything good um, in terms of production and support for customers has been Lindsay and the team that she has supported all this time, um, including Nolan, including Jess, who's with us today. Um, yeah, including Sean. Um, including Sandy, who's there at the warehouse today. Um, we've had a great team, and uh, yeah, they're the ones you should thank. So I'm going to make sure that they have their jobs, and that's the important thing for me. And Jordan has liked the stream. Thank you very much. And hey, sorry for the detour. I mean, that was, that was fairly random. But let's... Uh, get back to the engine metal here because I decided where was it oh yeah this it looks like it looks like little splotches instead of some kind of actual chipping Greg says, fish bump. <laughs> Thank you, Greg. Yeah, I'm definitely, uh, I was definitely surprised that the partnership we were pursuing in the UK uh, fell apart when and how it did. We're still arguing with that company, too. They've decided that they have a license to produce our product, which of course they do not. Which is as simple as saying, cool, show me that document. Well, no, this, that, the other thing. We discussed a lot. Yeah, we discussed a lot. Nothing ever finalized. Unfortunately, that is interfering with the current sale, because who wants to buy a company that might be involved in a legal fight about their IP? That's no fun, so. It gets complicated. And yeah, Manitra Mayhem, thank you. Yeah, at least there's a light at the end of the tunnel. At least uh, there should be. Um, if this fight uh, with our former partner in the UK uh, goes on, um, interferes with everything. Uh, because, like I said, nobody's going to get involved in discussions about acquiring a company or even the IP um, if it's in legal limbo. One of the reasons I struggled to get here today, and like I said, I've been uh, struggling to be creative today, but I'm making myself do it, and I'm glad for the company. You know, Bob Ross talked about that. You've got to have the light in the dark, and Bob Ross talked a lot about his uh, mental health on his show, and I was always glad for that. Um, as a young man, a young artist, um, struggling with my own mental health issues, it was just this crazy idea that this guy was just going to sit up there painting and be like, by the way, I struggle with mental health issues. Here's a happy tree. And I was like, wow, great, we can talk about this. So I have to say, it was actually uh, Bob Ross who started normalizing, for me, the idea that, that people should talk about their mental health. Um, which was great for Bob Ross, but it turns out it was, you know, years uh, into adulthood before I found people uh, that were like-minded, uh, which is too bad, but I'm glad to see more and more these days that, that people do. People normalize uh, talking about their mental health, about their struggles, about what's going on. 
Um, and I like that. I appreciate that. Do that work, work to get uh, paint off the brush, then it's time to start over. Worked. Paint should come off nice and easily. Let's go ahead and get this whole corner here. There's an idea. Oh, yeah, I'm painting off. I'm painting off camera. Why oh, nobody says something? And Scott says hello, hello, Scott. Let's zoom out of it. There we go. How's that focus? I can't tell. Let's put a card in there so we can tell. When it's just chips on the screen, I'm like, I don't know. Is that in focus? I can't. Tell. I don't know. I wear glasses. What do I know? Wearing glasses that haven't had their prescription updated in two years because of uh, coronavirus. No, I'm not going to the optometrist. It is certainly not medically necessary for me to get updated glasses. All right. Again, I'm only getting a little paint in here at a time, so. Oh, where was I? That's right. I was going to get this one, too. I was going to get these. go little brushy lines get some water dab some off get some paint yeah heck I even thought about going back to uh, I don't need this uh, I'll leave the light I know I won't because that's gonna be horrible for everybody else uh, Doing commission painting, or ooh, hey, that is not firmly attached to my desk. That is gonna fall. Enter my dog. <laughs> Going back to commission work, or I don't know. No, I don't know. I can do all the things. It's been 12 years since I've been in a position where I could stop and think, hey, what am I? What am I? What do I want to be doing? It is not entirely unwelcome. At this point, since I want to do lines, I'm actually going to do something a little cheeky. And that is grab my silver pencil. That's right, I have a silver pencil. Let's see how this works today. Oh, yeah, look at that. That's going to be okay. What's that? Right here on these edges? Oh, okay. Edge highlight. All right. I've remembered not to over... I'm going to leave that I don't know that I'm going to remember not to overweather the other wing because I haven't gotten to that wing yet. But let's see here. We've got our little spots on a couple little highlight there. A couple 
widgets here. All right, and you know what I didn't do? I didn't account for the pilot climbing up here. So let's uh, let's do some of that. Let's get some sponge madness. The madness of the sponge. What does the sponge say? Meow 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 meow. What does the sponge say? Secret of the sponge. up in here right here I'll do the rest with some brush work come here my brush I want to see you little brush And we can make this heavier with the brushwork. Ooh, too thin. Any thoughts on natural sponges versus blister foam? Yes, I do have some uh, thoughts on that. Um, in fact, let me uh, let me take this opportunity to do my favorite part of this job, which is address a question live. Well. Doesn't even have to be live. Addressing your questions is my favorite part of the job. So let me uh, touch this up here. We're going to talk about different sponges because I happen to have a lot of sponges. Candy. And we can talk about not just my, what did you say? Thoughts. Not just my thoughts, but we can give a, have a practical little discussion, practical demonstration about differences. Indra has liked the stream. Thank you very much and welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. To the land of expectations. To the land of <laughs> land of Dictionopolis. We'll go with Dictionopolis today. Whoa! And apparently we're going to put a lot of silver there because I dropped my brush. Just kidding. We're going to get rid of that. Just like that. Alright. Clean the brush. One, two, three chambers. Wipe it off here. So for now, this is the initial round of chipping. And I'm going to come back with colors to darken that and help blend it a bit because it should be more weather than this, a little more uh, part of its environment. So let's talk here about different sponges. I have here some of that. I have uh, sheet versions too. I have a lot of different things. But let me get my uh, sponge bucket. Ooh. There's a bunch of tape in there that doesn't belong. All right. Sponge bucket. Also, foil tape. For putting foil on cars. Car models. So look, sponges. And whatever that is, we're not gonna ask about the fuzz. Just kidding. It's all sponges, uh, different sponges. So I have uh let's see, here's this guy. And uh, yeah, I'll do it. anybody else? Where am I other sponges? I have more sponges than that. You belong over there. I should probably organize these drawers. When I redid the uh, studio again, I uh, didn't bother with some of the drawers because I was like, oh, those are done. Like, Those drawers have always been organized. Of course, it turns out 
<laughs> Maybe they weren't organized to begin with. I just took for granted that that's how they were. All right, so let's see here. I've got some, uh, what have I got here? Purple ink. Against the blue, it ought to be nice and visible. So the trick with sponges is that you get different texture. Um, well, that's what all that stuff is in there. Somehow it got wet in there. Oh, I probably put a wet sponge in there. Um, I've got steel wool for texture. Yeah, it's all steel wool in there. That's what I thought. Steel wool in there. Um, I've got blister foam. I've got sea sponge, and I've got processed sponge. And the trick with these, um, let me actually have scissors in here today. Scissors are the thing in the studio that uh, disappear the fastest. Um, I bought a whole pack of scissors that I put up here on the uh, rack. Um, it's a whole pegboard of tools here. And uh, yeah, I'm lucky if there's ever a pair. <laughs> All right, so I've got my blister foam, I've got my processed foam, um, I've got a section of natural foam. Maybe, I need scissors for that too. Um, hmm, let me get a different section, a bigger section. There we go, I've got a big section of natural foam and I have, I'm gonna get a section of steel wool here. All right, and I'm gonna spread this out a bit. Let me use it to put batteries on it and show my kid how you get steel wool to catch fire with a battery, and that'll be awesome. Also, there was wet paint in my ink, so I don't know what's going on there, but this will be interesting. All right. Um, so, uh, I have demonstrated today and other times with... Um, so, we're going to do this in order here. So, we blister foam. Ooh, no, we're not. Not with that. Wow. That paint messed things up. Uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's uh, use a cup. And we'll just do that. And then for our demonstration purposes, we'll say, no, doesn't count. <laughs> All right, so let me get a fresh piece of uh, blistery foam here. Let me zoom it out a bit. Let's zoom out a bit. Gotta see the big picture, everybody. Here we go. All right. And I'm gonna take my blister foam. I'm gonna load it up with some ink. Get some of that ink out of here. And I am going to take that and I'm going to go boom, boom, boom. And I'll get some texture out of it. This is the texture I'm getting from blister foam. Now, one of the things I like about blister foam. Is that I can use an edge to create lines of dots. Very handy. Very handy. Oh, I should keep that. Put that here. That is our reminder. The process sponge is very much the same. Um, you can get process sponge, and I'm sorry that I only have one type. Uh, right now, I normally have a uh, makeup sponge. Um, I think that's all more puck foam that somebody gave me. Uh, makeup sponge uh, is the, the dense white triangles you'll see, especially this time of year. Halloween is a great time to go out and get those, in fact. Um, if you hit your local, uh, if your grocery store has Halloween decorations and, and makeup especially, um, that means they'll have the kits that have the little sponges in them. You could usually get a little um, octagon of these little triangle sponges. Uh, and they're a very dense white foam, and those are fantastic. Um, I love those. Um, they're probably missing for Halloween. <laughs> but I'll find them in the bedroom. All right. Um, so this is just a slightly um, different foam. Um, they're very similar. Um, in this case, I'm looking, and this isn't just process, this is poly. So this is a polyester. This is the same kind of material. It's just a different kind of foam. So let me uh, get a little thing like that. Tap, tap, tap. Oop, no, let's get this ink out of here. Go away, ink. As you can see, I'm getting very similar texture out of that not very different. Here's where things do get different. Because with a natural sponge, I have 
whole lot of different texture going on. So right off the bat, if I get this wet, I'm going to get it dry on paper here off camera a minute. All right, right off the bat, uh, let's scoot this up a little bit. I'm going to go here. You can see I get a very different texture out of this. And it's going to be different depending on how I use it, depending on how I rotate it, uh, which sections I get wet. If I get it wet over here, I'll take some of that off. Now I'm getting a different texture again. Again. Uh, and it's just because of the varied surface. And of course, that's going to be the case with steel wool. Where I can get very little, I'll make it flat, or roll it up, mess it up. That out of there, it's not working. There we go. And I can create texture that way. So it's really a question of um, trying to create texture. One of the things I like about uh, blister foam or other poly foams um, and the makeup foam, uh, especially the makeup foam, because I like I like the edges. I like being able to get lines um, they do very well visually on models in my opinion so you've got that line um, people seem to like that on a model um, and I feel like it really works um, to help sell the idea um, uh, yeah so I like the dense sponges for that so that would be um, blister foam um, anyway any dense artificial foam um, sponge um, including the makeup foam ones those white triangles those are great and I would bring the model back over here for a final rundown, end of day, like, hey, folks, this is what we did. Here's the weathering. Um, but I'm just going to hold it for a minute and be careful because, of course, there's all this wet purple over here. And I don't want any of that involved here. But we started to weather up the wings, particularly to give a path for the pilot coming up here to the cockpit. I'm going to throw the cockpit in there, boom, because I added some color between shows here. So the cockpit's starting to come together. Particularly, I feel, once you actually put it together, boom, let me uh, zoom all the way out, bring our camera up for the full picture. Whoa! And Travis, my pleasure. Uh, it really is my favorite part of the uh, job. Um, when I've got a question to answer, it's great. So I appreciate that question today. So there we go. Here's the whole plane. We'll have the visible cockpit. There we go. It's starting to come together. All right, folks. Thank you very much for tuning in today. I really appreciate uh, your time and your company. Uh, whether you're just tuning in now, uh, whether you're tuning in live, I should say, or you're tuning in uh, after the fact and catching this uh, on YouTube or Facebook, it's been great having you. I appreciate it. Um, and, of course, as uh, pointed out to Travis today, uh, my favorite point, part of the job is being able to answer your questions. So if you have one you want to see in video, uh, leave a comment, send me a note, anything you can to reach out and let me know. And I'll do my best to cover your topic on what, Workbench Wednesday or another video. Thanks again for tuning in. Remember to like, subscribe, bells, whistles, and uh, 